Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic. Today we are on with another Sage Energy install. This is again whole home ecosystem with an EV charger, a backup gateway, obviously the solar inverter and our battery system as well. We've finished it now, we've just been through the commission and this one is a little bit different because of the cable route we've taken with the gateway out here in the garage. Before we get into all of that, I just want to say if you're a customer and you're looking for one of these, there's a link in the description where you can go off to our website and get in touch. It'd be an absolute pleasure to propose you a system and to say thank you to our awesome customers on this project. They have looked after us so well with teas, coffees, drinks, snacks, bacon sandwiches, and we are very, very grateful. So from myself, Nathan and Ollie, thank you indeed. And also Nathan and Ollie with the roof work on this one, they've done an incredible job on what was quite a tricky roof. There was a few ups and downs in there and with the extension and some of the differences in the tiles that had been used, it presented a few little challenges, but they've absolutely smashed it. So we're gonna go into this, see what we've got and how it all came together. So you can see in the gateway, we have our two comms cables up here. This is FE1 and FE2. One is going to our stack and one is going to the EV charger. We've got connectivity to the internet into the stack. So that will provide comms to all the other devices through the connection here. Now you can use all of these ports as well. So if you wanna do remote signaling of buzzers, lights, to alert people when you're going off grid, those things can be done. You can also use these ports for RS485 comms and equally on the big plug in the inverter down here, there is another range of pins for you to do the same. In our gateway, we've got our grid feed coming in. So this is bringing power from our metering area. And then we've got the return via the backup port here going out to the consumer unit. We've also got our inverter into here. We have got our EV charger and we have got our comms um, CCA for the Tiger tap in here. So this connects up to the tap on the roof. So you've got your positive and negative and your basically RS485 style comms. So this can talk to the tap on the roof, which then wirelessly talks to all the optimizers. And that is powered from this little power pack here. So it has mains voltage in and then DC voltage out into the tap. And that's gonna be wired to the internet as well. Um, we have got most of that all sorted now. There's the electrode still to pop into the system, which we've got that ready to go. We've got our PV strings coming into here. So this is two PV, four core, six mil PV ultra with two strings. So we've got a string on the front of the house, a string on the back, and then out of the bottom here, we go off to the inverter. So your ins are at the top, your outs are at the bottom. Pause, neg, pause, neg, neg, pause, neg, pause. It basically goes this one, for those of you who aren't sure of IMER, it goes this one to this one, this one goes to that one, that one goes to that one, and then that one goes to that one. So they kind of run diagonal. They are numbered like one to two, uh, three to four, five to six, seven to eight. It makes sense once you get your head around it. The um, Proteus isolate here is a three pole variant. You can get them in four pole as well. Of course, we've just got single phase here, so three poles is more than adequate. And that allows lots of wiring room for our HO7 10 mil which comes down into the big plug here, into the side of the inverter. And then you can see we've got our PB Ultra split apart for our two strings, pos and neg, in the right colors. We've got our comms coming into the inverter and link back to the SIGIN store. We've got our Wi-Fi dongle up there as well. And this one is ready to go. We just need to tie some of these cables up with some ties. Over this side, we've got our EV Ultra, which runs out to the charge point. We've just cleated that because as long as it is short with a bit of trunking or a cleated cable, and this runs up bottom entry into these chargers. I think the new version they're bringing out will allow for rear entry, but at the minute you're limited to top and bottom. So I'll just come in at the bottom, got our little cable hoster down there, and our lead ready to go off to the charge point. You can um, fit these with the pen fault protection if you need to, but obviously with the islanded system, don't necessarily need that because our rod sits there in sort of parallel with everything. So your pen fault's taken care of in the old traditional way before these unicorn devices were innovated. And it's a bit of a faff with the um, external breaker that you need to use with the side energy kit. So unless we're fitting this as a standalone system, we've stopped installing those. And the new version of the charger, which I don't know if it's out yet, I think it's imminent in the next month or two, has pen fault protection built in, which is actually, I believe, so I'm led to believe anyway, not actually complying with IET01. Um, but again, that is um, some employees from Matty who are pushing that narrative and I'm not fully sure that is exactly the situation of play. 
But yeah, you can see we're good to go there. I need to tidy all this up now, get the trunking lids on, get my glands back into the bottom of the gateway, and then I'll show you it all when it's covered up, lidded up, and uh, ready to go. Just show you the trunking route. So we've got some nice trunking across here. I still need to pop the caps in and whatnot. That runs around back under the stairs where we've got a switch fuse, which is ready to go there. I will show you a bit of that under there. Just to also say we've got these fire clips. I should have shown you actually before I put the trunking lid on. But basically these slot into there and then the wings pull apart and you can then run your cables through. So you can fit these with the actual containment and then use them to pass the cables through and they'll hold them in place. So it's not like where you've got to screw a fire clip in and then twist it around the cables or if you're using all around band as an old school method. These will actually install into the trunking, sit there in place and then you can just drop your cables in, which is obviously handy for the fireproofing, but it is also really useful um, in terms of just supporting your cables whilst they get installed. And then when they are all good to go, they clip around, so they're not going to allow any of these cables to drop. I can't show you one handed, but they won't let them drop out basically. They sit there in the trunking and there is no way that that can fall and allow the cable to drop and entangle somebody. So they're a really neat solution. And I'll try and get some short form content actually of this. Um, and yeah, nice neat cable run. You see there is another submarine there that goes off to another DB. They've not used any uh, trunking on that one. And I believe there are plans for this customer to do some sort of conversion in here of sorts. So this may change yet. And that's why we opted, it, opted to go along the ceiling rather than attached onto this timber here, because I think that's coming out made it a bit more of a faff but fortunately by luck more than judgment we actually hit the um, timber right across this carriage it's literally above the trunking so that was an absolute bonus because it wasn't part of the plan it's just where it fell so yeah i'll show you it when it's finished anyway and it's all neatened up but yeah that's the trunking leading to one of the stairs switch fuse to go in which is going to fuse down to the grid input in here for us because we have only got a 60 amp supply on this premises anyway so we've got to drop that down to cover that off so under the stairs here, you can see we've got our meter with an isolator that was already in place. And we've got our main tails coming into our switch fuse up there. We then drop out from the switch fuse, which is 60 amp over to our um, inverter location. And then we've also got the return from that, which runs into this consumer unit here, feeding power back into the house. Pretty straightforward. So we're fusing down the cables leading off to the inverter and gateway and then allowing a safe return back to the house consumer unit. The gas is going to be redundant soon, and you can see we've got an old gas pipe in here, which is actually earth as well, which is giving us a, a better reference in terms of rods. That is really giving us a, a low value of RANZE because of that bin in situ, and we've got a rod on the system as well. So we double bubble there. This is going to island very, very happily and nicely um, if and when the power cuts. Handy that the customer had already had the consumer unit uh, updated, so we've not done this, and they'd even allowed a way for the PV to be connected to, but of course with the gateway, we don't, we don't need that, but it was nice that it was there. Um, and yeah, this uh, all done and dusted, ready to go. So I thought we'd have a little look at the roof via drone footage. So we'll see we'll fire this up here, ready for launch. And I've got a lot better with this drone, it has to be said. You can see our roof up here with our 450 watt JA solar bifacial panels. And these look the absolute business. The new tiles you can see under the ridge, they're not our handiwork. They were there already and we've kept well away from those. The roof is in pretty good condition and half of it is actually an extension. You can see the JA Solars looking absolutely brilliant. We've got 12 on each side. They're on Van der Volk Ace mounting. Pest fixed bird mesh with Tiger optimizers underneath them. We've got all of our hooking points and clamps, end clamps and rails in exactly the right position for these particular panels. And they will sit up there now for decades to come, generating lots of green renewable energy for this homeowner and their family to enjoy. And you can see they've got a lovely aspect around their home as well. This is giving a total of near 11 kilowatts of generation. It is on a north-south split, which is another interesting one to observe and monitor in the months and years ahead. And we've got a growing client list of people who've opted for just those kinds of installations. And generally is what we're seeing around 55 to 60% production from the north side as compared to the south. 
the bulk of which is achieved in the summer months. And up on the roof here, you can see we've got our array on the back roof, the correct distance off the bottom of the um, roof line here, and also adequately spaced from the edge is quite exposed on this. So we didn't want to get any closer than necessary on the edge spacings there and running across over to the middle of the house. And shout out to Andy, our scaffolder, who's done a cracking job on the system up there for the guys to work on, allowing safe working access for us to get this kit mounted. And you can see there again, the JA Solars with the Pestfix mesh all securely fastened around these frames and pushed down onto the tiles below. So no birds or rodents or critters are ever gonna get in there the cabling and panels are going to be safe from any damage from nesting birds or squirrels that decide they want to go and eat some insulation for lunch and these will sit up here trouble free for the long term that is certainly the plan and the bulk ace mountain looks absolutely amazing with the new end clamps we're big fans of that and you can see here as nathan pops up to the ridge to look to the other side exactly the same these are the bits the customers can't see along the top of the roof line so we always include those in those videos to give full sight of everything we've done as accountable evidence so you can see we've got the side energy ev charger here at the moment these are top and bottom entry but there is a new version imminently launching which i believe allows for rear entry and also has the pen fault protection built into it of course, if you're using this with an island capable system with the backup earth reference, you don't need to use the pen fault protection anyway. But the newer version does have it built in rather than this one, which has a separate device further back in the system. Again, 7 kilowatt, and this is a tethered variety. You can get them untethered, and you can also get them in three phase. There's an RFID card which allows for swiping to activate charge cycles, or you can start and stop the charging through the app. Or if you want, you can have it on free vend for anyone who just pulls up and plugs in. Of course, you can do solar divert. So if you've got excess solar power and you want to put it in the car, you can do that. You can play around with all of the places that can and can't happen. So have priority to the house battery, have priority to the grid, priority to the EV, or a blend of that. It's total control of your energy flow. We've got our side energy inverter and battery storage system in here. This is 16 kilowatt hours of storage with a 10 kilowatt inverter. Got adequate airspace around it as required by the manufacturer. And this cable here is our EV Ultra for the charger just through the wall. We've gone for the Marshall Tough Lux 150 by 150 trunking underneath the inverter on this one. That was to just allow the cables to drop through on the sub main neatly and tidily in this garage area. We didn't want to cleat these across the ceiling space. The reason we've done that is this back of the garage is going to be converted and we didn't want to take the cables around there where we might have issues of them being buried in the fabric of the building. So we brought them forward and popped them through the trunking. As I'll show you in the, or have shown you in the video already, um, we have got the fire support clips from Marshall Tough Looks in there as well. So in the event of something horrible happening, it will um, keep those cables supported. We've got our nice neat angles on there and that runs through to under the stairs which i'll show you if i haven't already with our switch fuse and return back to the customer's consumer unit the gateway allows for whole home backup so your grid feed comes in from our metering area uh, it's running through one of these contactors so as the grid cuts in or out the contactor will open and close there's a smart port here for integration of heat pumps or ev chargers or any uh, loads you want to put on that where it gives you a little bit more control in when they're taken on or off system when you are off grid and also gives some monitoring of power consumption as well down here we've got our inverter ev charger and the tiger access point the backup port goes to the house consumer units and then we've got the spd here looking after the surges on the ac side our cca is in there for the tiger system as well so the tiger optimizes bring the rapid shutdown functionality, which is fantastic in terms of safety. You also get panel by panel level monitoring and data in the Tygo app, which is super useful to see performance with this being a north south split. That is gonna be really interesting to monitor in the weeks and months ahead. And we've also got the um, opportunity there with the rapid shutdown for if there's just a singular fault with a panel, it doesn't drag the whole array down. It will just isolate the affected panel that's causing a problem. We've got our PV ultras that run down to our IMO isolator here. There's two strings on this one, the front and the rear roof, all from one point of isolation. And that is in a six mil four core PV ultra 
cable so super neat and tidy and that follows the same path through the trunking out the wall here up the gable end and then back into the loft space got our proteus ac isolator 63 amp and that is allowing us to do maintenance on the inverter you know these aren't points of emergency isolation sometimes that is a misconception these are for function so electricians or anyone who's coming to clean the panels has a place where they can make an isolation to then work safely around the equipment um, the inverter itself we've used two of the MPPTs there's four in there as you'll see on any of the prior videos where we've gone into that in a bit more detail and they um, will allow up to 600 volts of VOC power going into them we've also got comms through um, Wi-Fi 4G and hardwired connections in this inverter You've got the lights on the side of the inverter which will illuminate to show if the battery is charging or discharging and you've got the sock state on the side sorry they're, they're sort of breathing that when it's green it shows it's charging when it's blue it shows it's discharging i haven't turned the lights on on this side yet but that will show battery level once it is turned on um and yeah that kind of is what it is in there we'll have a little look under the stairs and i'll show you the switch fuse and how all of that looks as well but this in here is pretty neat and tidy so I hope you've enjoyed a look through this system. I tried to give a good overview and flavour of how these things are overcome. This was a challenging one with the gateway in the garage a little bit of a distance away from the main metering area and with the roof having a few lumps and bumps in it. it took us two and a half days in total. We could have probably done it in the two days. However, we had a panel delivered damaged through the course of these coming out to site and we had to go back to our HQ to get one of our stock panels and that brought us into a third day. But yes, a team of three, and we've done pretty good in terms of that on this one. And again, a huge thanks to our customers. They've been really patient and kind through the whole process, starting way back at the original proposal, and then through the G99, and now on handover and delivery. And we hope they're going to enjoy this system for many, many years to come, running their home on sunshine. They've also got the plans for a heat pump, I believe, that's imminent to tie in with this system as well. So they'll be able to make full use of all of that solar power to keep their home and water hot or warm. Um, and yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to work for them. If you're a customer and you'd like one of these in your home, there'll be a link in the description alongside this video where you can go to our website and get in touch. And again, a massive thanks to Nathan and Ollie for the great work they've done up on the roof. If you've got any questions or comments around this video, as always, please drop them in below. And otherwise, we'll see you on the next one.